Hello everyone, this is Marcy with Creators Call Shop here on YouTube and Creators Call on Etsy. Today I'm continuing on in my series that I have titled Currently Creating. We're working on the three fall journals. In the last video, I showed you kind of my thought process on how I divide the pages up into signatures. We're still working on this ring binder, but we will progress on to the other two journals in the next few episodes. So today I think we're gonna work on trying to make some pockets and embellishments and things for this journal because I have a lot of those done already for the other two journals. So get yourself comfy, get yourself a drink or a snack, cuddle up with your favorite pet or child and we'll get back to you right after this. Surprisingly, if you will recall after watching our last video, I was working away on putting all of these papers into signatures, trying to make it flow together cohesively, and it's no surprise that we had too many pages. So some of the pages had to come out, and this little guy right here, this guy, I never did figure out where to put him, and he's pretty thick. So I want the person, the new owner, to be able to have room to add things to their journal. And we still have some things to add in, in terms of embellishments. So I had to take some pages out. So right at the moment, it's at 120 pages. We still have room, as you can see. This kind of pops out naturally. So there's still room to work, and I don't want it to be too stuffed. We may still end up taking some things out along the way, a page or two here or there, just to make everything fit. Because really the goal is not for me to stuff it, but for the new owner to have fun playing with it. So I did make a few more changes and I finished the third signature after the last video ended. I'm feeling very good about it. So one of the major changes, this page that I was going to put in at the front, I moved it to the back. So fall has come at last, Miss Bess. And I think that makes a nice kind of like a ending last page or statement to the journal. I move some of these around. And then all of those pages at the very front I took out completely other than this little flap here that I like that it says, today is going to be a great day, which I think sets the tone for the journal. And of course, whoever gets it, you could use this for several years in a row. You can divide it up by month, what you're doing each month, or you can make like this one year, this the next year, and this one the next year, regardless of what the tabs say. You know, so really there, there are lots of options with this one. Let me show you what I am going to try to work with today. I pulled out a bunch of fabric pieces here. This fabric is so wild, I don't really like it. However, it does have kind of a pumpkin-y look. And if you match it up against this paper strip here, they're kind of similar, aren't they? So it's not my favorite, but I think it'll look very nice in this journal for the theme that we have going on. But I pulled out a few fabrics, and uh, these were the ones that I had already got at the thrift store. This one was in my stash, and I have an idea in mind for this, for the cover. Then I pulled out these because we'll probably be making a fabric flip or some fabric belly bands. Of course, we need to make our pockets. Um, that needs to move. And then I have these fabrics. This one was in the bag with all of these pre-cut squares. And so I may end up using a strip of this to cut a, um, like a tie to wrap around the journal to close it. So. That's my thought there, but in the meantime, it will be good for fabric flips and things. And then I just have these that are not too girly, that look kind of country, pumpkin patchy. And this piece right here is just ridiculously bright. So 
I think it'll be a great addition to a pumpkin patch themed journal because I really can't imagine where else I'm going to use that piece of fabric. But anyhow, the other things that I have to play with are all of my scraps, of course, that we've cut off from trimming down the pages. Sorry, I feel like my hands are just really busy here, aren't they? Very distracting. So we have all these paper strips. I have these two recipe pages. I don't know if I really want to tear them up. I kind of like the recipes that are on them, so we'll see about that. This was a book page I tried to use in here that I was going to include in this journal, and then I ripped it. But I think maybe I can make a really cute tag or something, so or a pocket. This was packaging that I'm going to maybe make into something. And then just all of these little bits and pieces. So those, we have all of those. A few more fabric pieces here. And then these were those book pages. And when I think of this journal, I just think of these little boys in these pictures. I know that we added the pages from this other little book here as kind of a main theme that kind of ties everything together but as I'm decorating and as I have the theme in mind this is really what I'm thinking of are these two boys the scarecrow all in the pumpkin patch so I think I'll be making pockets out of them I have all this packaging that I think might make cute embellishments maybe so we will just see we'll just see what we get so from this point on I will speed up the camera and you can watch me work all right let's get to it the first thing I decide to work on are pockets to put into the journal now I want to remind myself of the page sizes so I can make sure that these pictures that I'm using are not too wide and they are all just fine so now I'm going to just trim a little of the excess white border off of each one and just straighten up the pictures. And that page right there, that was the cover off the book. I'm just not sure if I really want to use it as a pocket or not, and if I want to use it at all, so it goes to the side. Now this little book page, I know that I want to use that image, so I cut that off. And then the next thing I move on to here are those images that were on the envelopes. So I'm going to do kind of a rough cut around each one. And then I'll go back and uh, do a little bit closer cut on some of these. I have in mind that I want to make ephemera, make tags, and do different things, so we'll just see what we have. Now this piece here, it's quite large, and I was thinking I might cut all three of them apart and make separate images. And then as I started cutting right about here, I stop and I think, you know what, actually that would make a really great belly band. So let me make sure that it's not too long or too short. So I changed my mind about how I'm going to cut out the image and I cut it out as a solid piece instead. And then I'm just doing a little bit of trimming up around the edges there. And then this one too, I'm pretty sure I wanna use that piece there on a tag. Or yeah just as a decoration on a tag or something. On my review of this, I noticed that on the sped up playback, it looks like I'm really going after it with the scissors and I'm about to cut my fingers off, but I assure you, <laughs> I assure you I was cutting much more carefully than it looks like on the, on the replay here. I went and grabbed my glue stick so that I can be ready to glue some things down. And then I'm just trimming up a little bit around those pieces there. Now I'm gonna do some inking so that they're all kind of ready to go. And then if I do this step all at once, it saves time later and I don't have to worry about remembering to do it on each piece. And I just kind of edited a lot of that out because you don't need to watch me ink every piece. 
On these pages here though, I decided I wanted to use more than just brown. I wanted to bring in some of the other colors and of the corn patch and of the blue that I'm trying to use. So I'm playing around with that a little bit. I'm gonna use blue. I'm gonna use some gold. And actually it turns out looking really cute. The yellow looks nice with the corn stalks in that picture. Now I'm going to be looking for some papers that I can back these on. First for the belly band, I'm trying to find one white enough and that I think would look good behind those images. I wind up with the green. I like how that really makes the green on the veggies stand out and just brings out all of the color. It looks a little, a little more vibrant up against that one there. Got the thumbs up of approval. <laughs> now I'm measuring it up against the page again just so I can mark it and trim it to fit. And then I need to cut off the decorative strip there, the branding strip. And now that it's cut down to page size, I'm going to glue that to the cardstock. It just gives it a lot more stability. I toyed with the idea of trimming around it again, but then you don't see the color and the pattern from the cardstock, so I decided not to do that. But it is an option. You could always just back it on a plain cardstock and cut out around the images and use that as the belly band shape. I had to fiddle with it a little bit to get it to fit just right on the on the strip here. It wasn't centering just right, and then I ended up having to re-glue it. But I get it here in the end, and then I'm just going around and re-gluing the edges, the corners, where it might be loose. I may yet decide to go around it with my sewing machine and just sew around the edges. I haven't quite decided yet if that's what I want to do, but that is something in the back of my mind. And now I'm going to ink up the edges of the belly band itself. I don't, I'm not really going for the grungy look, but I don't want it so beautifully clean. I think it has a little more of that farmy feel <laughs> when it's not pure, crisp and clean, you know. It's just, I think it just looks nice on this particular journal. You know, some, some journals you want to ink and some you don't. I'm trying out some different colors here for that one. I'm pretty sure I like the orange, but I try it up against a couple of other strips and it just doesn't pop on those like it does on that orange piece. I still have plans for the rest of that book page as well, but I do like that this is going to make a really pretty little pocket. Now I'm going to trim it down to fit. And just that little extra orange really brings out the colors in the picture. Smoothing it down so it's got a good press, good adhesion. Now I'm going to be looking for a cardstock to back those, paid, those pictures on so that I can make more pockets with them. As I'm rummaging through my piles, I get a little sidetracked. I remember that I wanted to make tags out of those two striped pieces there, so I stop and do that very quickly. I'm not sure that I really want to use any of these images that I've cut out on them, but we'll figure something out. And now I'm just trying to see what fits and what doesn't. That color is really pretty up against the corn stalks and with the blue border it stands out. These pieces are just too small, so I'm getting some bigger pieces there. I like the blue with the polka dots and then there's that green again. That green really works for a lot of things in this journal. So, I'm 
Now on this one here, I show you how I like that the green, uh, the cardstock brings out the green in his shirt right there. And then I just kind of play around to see if that yellow looks better on the orange, but I, I think the blue does, so that's good. And then we'll put the one with the yellow border on the blue paper. And now I'm just going to trim all of these down to fit, trim down the cardstock to fit around the, the pictures. And just trying to adjust it, make sure everything has an even border. And again, you don't need to watch me cut every single one. So <laughs> I edit out some of that. And we're done with the trimming. I'm grabbing my hole punch. It's a one inch punch, as you can see. And I'm going to, once I glue these to their cardstock bases, I'm going to punch notches in the tops of the pocket so that you have an easy way to grab in and out, slide things in and out of the pocket. Now these guys, even though I'm using, uh, excuse me, even though I'm using the glue stick, I'm also giving an extra edge with the wet glue, the art glitter glue there, just so that it sticks really well around the edges. And again, I may decide to go around these with uh, my sewing machine, but I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to do that. So I just want to make sure that the edges are glued down very nicely. I get started inking and then I realize I don't want to ink until the notch is cut out so I can ink around the notch. I just try to be efficient so I don't have to go back and repeat steps. Try to think a little bit ahead and get things done in an efficient way so that I don't waste time later or forget a step. Now this one I am going to punch the notch just a little off center to preserve the image. And also I just think it looks interesting when you do that. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. It just needs to be where it looks nice, where the image can still be seen. And either way, it's gonna be nice to have a little thumb hole to pull things in out, to pull things in and out of the pockets. So this one's going down. And again, going around the edge with the wet glue. Today my art glitter glue is being a little more cooperative, which is nice. I appreciate it. I'm gonna give that a good press so that it's stuck down really well. I'm punching my hole again, slightly off center. And then I'm showing you there that I will ink it up in a bit, but not on camera. I don't want to waste time filming time to do that because you already know that I'm going to do that. Now this one, I'm turning that piece of cardstock around because the polka dots on it will show up along the base a little bit and the top had more of a plain edge. And since I'm going to punch a hole in it anyway, I just thought it would be nice to have, have a little bit of those polka dots showing along the bottom. That's probably overthinking, but again, I'm showing you I will ink it later, but because of time, we're gonna keep moving forward. Now I'm gonna play with this little tag. Now that was a packaging tag, and I do like that it says Happy Harvest, but the thing I liked most was the blue plaid border, and it's a nice heavyweight uh, craft cardstock. I wanted to do something with words, I think but I'm not sure, so I held it up against that one storybook page and now I'm trying different patterns to see if I like them or not. And really what I think I want is that print there off of that page. However, first I'm gonna save the title because I like that it says pumpkin heads and I'm sure I'll use that somewhere in the journal to decorate. And then I cut out that image too. And now I'm just going to be tearing this down so that the book page print covers up the brown section in the middle that has the uh, packaging information on it, the brand information. Then I'm going to ink around the edges, making sure it's just a little too wide, so I have to tear it down a little bit more. Then I'll ink it up before I glue it down. Now 
it's a good fit. Still have a little extra on the edge, so I just keep tearing <laughs> and keep inking till it works right. Then I'm going to glue it down here. I heard somewhere if you glue the both sides, the paper that you're gluing and the base you're gluing it to, that you get a better adhesion. I don't know if that's true, but I'm doing it right now just in case. I'm going to press it down. And then, as far as an image, I like those three, but they were a little too big. So I have the accompanying notepad, and I'm going to cut the image off the bottom of the note sheet. I'm just checking the other one just in case it has one I like better. It does not. So I'm cutting these out along the bottom here. And they're just the right size. And of course they match that image that I put on the belly band, which is nice. I thought I might use this on the back. I do have enough to use it there. So I'm gonna set that off to the side to maybe use on the back of the tag. Inking up, going around the edges. And then I'm gonna fiddle around with the placement on the tag. I can't decide, do I want it to go? Lengthwise, do I want it to go crossways? Now I'm checking to see if I can move the font because if I could have moved that book page print around, I probably would have done it lengthwise, but I can't. It's pretty well stuck down. So next best solution is to just cut the little images apart and make them fit. And again, I'm messing with placement. Oops, I've got to ink everything again. And then once I have it how I want it, I'm going to use the art glitter glue and then I'm just going to kind of hold it in place and glue it a section at a time so it doesn't move on me. And then the same thing with this piece. And now I have it exactly how I want it on the tag and then I'll just trim off the excess around the edges. And then I'm going to give, excuse me, I'm going to give it a little more definition with the ink around each individual image there around the seed packets looks cute so again this is this would have fit so I folded it kind of creased it around the edges where it would fit on the tag but I should have used my scissors or something because it doesn't tear evenly and then it doesn't really line up right and then I'm I'm thinking well it's just a little too long anyway so I switch it up I go to this notepad and this time a little I'm a little smarter I use the edge of my ruler to tear <laughs> And then I just uh, make it fit the back, tear it to fit. And this time when I crease it, I use the ruler again to tear along the crease and that should have done that the first time. But that's all right. I like the orange on the back. I think it adds some pretty color in it. It's kind of having trouble laying flat and it keeps sticking to my finger. <laughs> so having a trouble here. There we go. Now there's the writing space on the back of our tag and then I'll just trim up the edges here. And I'm going to give it an ink around the edges for a little definition. There we go. And then I will put some kind of topper on it later, some kind of ribbon. Um, it did come, the package it came in was had a ribbon on it too that said Happy Harvest and I think I'll probably use that as the topper. Now I'm moving on to these other couple of images. I've decided I want to make decorated paper clips and I still have that one and I'm looking at it since I cut the other one apart. I thought well maybe I could cut this one apart too. And the tomato image works the best so I am going to separate it from the rest of this, the rest of this piece, trim it off. And then I have that other little um, embellishment piece that came out of a set that I had a long time ago. So I'm going to make decorated paper clips or altered paper clips out of both of these. Now the tomato image is flimsy because it's just the paper from the envelope, but the pumpkin is a little thicker. It's a little bit thicker cardstock. So I'm going to back the tomato onto a piece of heavier cardstock so it has some stability. And I use that obnoxious orange color there, <laughs> so I can't wait to get rid of it. <laughs> and 
And then because the edges on that, the corners are a little bit rounded, I just need to trim it all around, all to fit so that it doesn't show in the background. None of the orange should show. There we go. And then I'm going to find, oh, inking. My idea here was that I wanted to do two-sided altered paper clips so that each side had a pretty image or a nice nice uh, backing on it. So that's what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find the papers that I want to be the opposite side of the paper clip that would show on the opposite side of a page when you clip it over the page. So it's kind of a double double altered paper clip. I can't remember exactly what they call it or a two-sided paper clip I guess. I don't know. So now I know I want the gray to back the tomato and I want those polka dots to back the pumpkin. Still have to trim to fit again on those round corners. So now I'm gonna lay my fronts and my backs together and then I'm going to trim down some more of the obnoxious orange to be the inside pieces. So you have to have the piece that you glue to the front or the back to kind of get it to stick it so it will stick to the paper clip. I got my paper clips figured out here and then I'm just raising those up. That's kind of like cheating, frankly, and I shouldn't have done that. And you will see why in a minute. And then I'm going about this kind of the wrong way anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I will discuss that here in a bit. It's been a while since I've made one. I have made two-sided paper clips in the past. It's just been a while, so there's a little bit of a trick. Now I'm using my clear gel tacky glue, and it should have been good. It should have been fine. I have used it on other paper clips before, but it was not working for me today. And I'm really having trouble. I'm really having to press this a lot and work with it, work with the image. It's just not doing what it should. I'm trimming that so it doesn't overlap the, the picture on the front of the paper clip. So that's the back side of the tomato. And it still needs a little more glue. It's just not quite sticking like it should. Just keep fiddling with it. I keep trying to press it in place and push it down and see it's gonna be cute. Look at that. I'm still having to glue some of the edges down here. And then I'm trying to wipe away the excess glue with my fingers. So now I think I'm ready to add the back, just making sure that the inside piece is not longer than the outside piece. And um, yeah, do not follow my example here because this is not how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> so I guess this is a good example of how not to do it. So then I realize Put the little backing, the, sh the piece of paper that's going to be the backing on the inside first, then lay your top image down, which is what I should have done in the first place. But I didn't. And because I bent that paper clip to try to get everything to fit in there so I could move around, you know, move everything around and have easier time of putting it together, because I did that, it does not bend back into place. And as you can see, I just keep fiddling with it here. I, there was a lot of fiddling that I edited out. And as you can see, it's just not tight on a page. So I'm, I'm trying to see if I can bend it to get it to tighten up, but essentially this isn't gonna work, which is fine. You know, it's all just paper. It's just paper and paper clips, but I'm gonna take those off and kind of come at it from a whole new direction, a <laughs> whole new angle. So I take off those backing pieces and I go and grab a couple of metal paper clips, which works a lot better. 
the uh, the plastic ones are just too thick they're just not working right and so that orange piece still has the tomato glued to the other side and this is the gray piece so this works well when you have when you're only decorating one side of the paper clip it's actually a lot easier but I really wanted two-sided paper clips now I'm happy with that so there it is okay I'm going to stop here as always that was a very quick hour I was having a little trouble with this paper clip I wanted to make it two-sided but my glue, the one glue didn't work quite right and I was making a mess. And then these plastic coated paper clips, it probably would have worked except I couldn't get this to fold back flat and then it wasn't gonna be tight enough to hold a paper. So uh, the plastic coating makes these a little too thick, but with the metal one, as you can see, that works a lot easier. It's just nice to have the two pretty sides if you can. And I have done it, it just wasn't working for me today. Actually, I think what I need to do is slide the two background pieces of paper in there and then glue so that they're already in there and then glue the pretty sides down I think is what I've actually done like that yeah that would work a lot better so I'm going to continue this off camera of course and I'll be doing a little bit more work just so that we can get moving ahead on these albums I will add some pretty something here, like a ribbon or something, so that these look pretty on the page. But I think that's going to turn out really cute. I'm going to take a minute and read to you from these ideals books that I am using in these journals. These are so beautiful. So if you see one of these from the ideals magazine, and um, they make books, they make these magazines, I don't know that they publish anymore, but I think, excuse the squeaky chair there, I think they might be a division of guideposts or guideposts was a division of ideals, I don't know. It seems like I heard that somewhere along the line, but I could be wrong. So anyway, today we are going to read this little poem. I think this is so cute and I wish I had found this page before I started cutting up pages for this journal because here's our little scarecrow. So today we're gonna to read about our scarecrow. It says, my clothes are tattered, my clothes are torn. I was fashioned by man, I was not born. Straw is my body from head to toe. I stand at my post, weary or no. A discarded shirt, overalls I wear. The wind blows through each tatter and tear. A hat on my head and soil neath my feet. While standing on guard, my life is complete. That's a poem by Carol Brock. Our Second quote for today is somewhat of a poem as well by Earl J. Grant, and it reads, Autumn at the roadside stand makes us glad that we are living to share in the beauty and richness of God's generous harvest giving. That's a really sweet picture there too. So I think one of my favorite things about autumn is that even though summer is winding down, it's completely gone. We're moving into the cold cold part of the year it just has this nostalgia that it brings forward and all of the fun things that we get to do and the scents and the colors and the activities of autumn so i'm going to leave you here with this and until next time i hope you will be inspired and do something creative today catch you in the next video